Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief at theserverside.com. You can follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ. I want to talk to you right now about doing a rebase and specifically doing a rebase of the master to a branch. Now that's a little bit unique. You don't typically do that and it's fraught with challenges. Rebasing is fraught with challenges because you're playing with your git commit history. But doing it with master not always a great idea. Usually, instead of rebasing master onto a branch, you probably want to rebase the branch onto master. And I, I have a tutorial for doing that as well. But in this case, this is what I'm going to do with my scenario. As you can see, I've got a master branch here with commits A, B, C, D, and E in them. And at commit number C, the develop branch splits off and the develop branch has a commit called F and G in it. Just to keep things really simple, I've named the files that I put into each commit after the commit name, so a.html, b.html, and c.html. Those are in both the master and the develop branch because, well, we don't split off until commit number C. Commit number D and E create files d and e.html in the master branch. And you can see over here in the master branch, the master branch has D and E. As far as the develop branch goes, it doesn't have D and E, but it does have F and G. And so F.html and G.html are in that develop branch. Now, the process of rebasing master onto develop will result in the master branch having all of the files that were originally in the master branch. It's not gonna lose anything but also gaining F and G. And so at the conclusion of this tutorial, we will, then we will now have a branch history that looks like this. A, B, and C is shared. The develop branch split from the master branch at C, and its next commits were F and G. You can see that, A, B, C, F, G. And then we're actually gonna merge master, rebase master, onto develop, which means taking master's D and E commits, which happened after the split, and putting them on the end of develop, putting them after that G commit. And so we'll have master, we'll have master's D and E commits after F and G. So when the rebase is finished, we'll have this type of a commit history. And furthermore, the master branch will have all seven files in it, However, we're not playing around with the develop branch. So we're rebasing onto develop, but we're not actually changing develop. And so the develop branch isn't gonna change at all. Before this whole thing starts, the develop branch goes A, B, C, F, G, A, B, C, F, G. Afterwards, it, do, it doesn't change. So it keeps all the same files, but all of the files from each of the branches are put into master. I would like you to follow along on this tutorial on your own. If you'd like to, you can just fork my repository at gitlab.com slash cameronmcnz slash simple rebase and merge example. Just go to my repository and you'll find it there. It's also on my GitHub account as well. So from either place, just fork it and then clone it to your own local workstation and then play around with it. As you can see, I've got a develop branch and a master branch. The master branch goes A, B, C, D, E, in terms of commits and commits history. F and G commits are on the develop branch. And each of these commits, I just create a file called a.html, b.html, so that when we're at the tip of master, if I look at master and take a look at the files in it, the tip of master has a, b, c, d, e.html. And if I take a look at the tip of development, we can see that this particular branch has a, b, c, because they branched off at the third commit, and then the develop branch also has fng.html. So I'd like to merge these branches together. I've cloned my fork onto my local machine. So I'll move into this directory. And you can see right now I've got one, two, three, four, five files here in the master branch. And we know that's the master branch because I can go git status. You can see I am on the master branch. And the operation I want to perform is the rebasing of the master branch onto the develop branch. And if I just do a git checkout of develop, 
and do an ls, we can see that develop does not have D and E files, but it does have F and G files, which are missing in master. And I want master to get these two files through a rebase. And so the command to do that is simply git rebase. The name of the branch that you want the branch of interest to point to. So that's the develop branch. That's the branch that we're going to rebase onto. And then which branch are you rebasing? Well, we are rebasing master. So I click enter. It does a rewind and then a fast forward. And you can see the result is a couple of different branches get pushed and rewritten on top of the develop branch. And now what branch am I in now? I do a git status. I can see that I'm in the master branch. Now before the master branch had five files in it and it did not have the FNG files, I'm gonna do an ls command right now. And you notice that we now have seven files, including the F and G command. So we've actually successfully done this rebase. If I take a look at the log, we can actually see that the whole history has been rewritten. Previously, if I looked at this, commit history before doing the rebase, would have seen, we would have seen a branch going off at commit number C. We would have seen the fact that, well, we no longer have, uh, we would have seen the fact that at C, develop added two new commits. So develop did D and E, and we would have seen that the, or sorry, the master branch did D and E, and then we would have seen that the develop branch did F and G. With the rebase, what we've done is we've taken the develop branch, which went A, B, C, F, G, and then we've taken the D and E commits of master and put them on top of it. That then gives the master branch everything that's in these commits, plus the two commits that it had that weren't part of the develop branch. And so yeah, so we get seven files now. And of course, if I do a git checkout and look at the develop branch, you notice that the develop branch does not have seven files in it. So this isn't a full synchronization. This is simply a manifestation of the fact that master has now got all the files in develop, but the rebase doesn't do a full synchronization between two branches. So we would still need to do some work to get all of the files of master into develop. And so that's the ins and outs of doing a rebase onto master. Now, it's not something I recommend, and you don't really rebase master. You rebase other branches onto master, maybe, but you don't rebase master onto other branches because if any other developers have used master, that's going to cause a problem. They're going to have a hard time syncing their changes and, and resyncing with you. They may even have to do a fresh clone and copy and paste changes into the new clone. It's not a good idea. Uh, furthermore, even if you try and push, so if I try and do a git push origin to GitLab, it's going to reject it. Oh, git, oh sorry. And that's it worked there because uh, I'm on the develop branch. I want to actually push master. So let me git checkout master. And of course, no, there haven't been any changes to the develop branch. We've just changed the history of master in relation to the develop branch. What I want to do is a, a git push origin of the master branch. And you can see that this has failed. And in this case, it said, uh, because the tip of your current branch behind the remote counterpart, blah, 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 fast forward merges, rejected. Um, but, you know, we can actually force this in. So the whole rebasing is causing some confusion here. But normally you can just do a force and say, hey, look, I know all about this stuff. Believe me, just take these changes. But now I'm going to try the, the force. And notice here, it's saying, hey, we failed to do this because you are not allowed to force push code to a protected branch. So the force would normally have worked there, but you know none of your Jedi powers are gonna work trying to, to force a push onto the master branch. It's protected. So in order to do that, I'd have to go into GitLab. I'd have to have the authentication or uh, the authentication rights to 
change branch permissions and then I'd have to push to it. I mean, I'm telling you, there's a lot of hoops to incorporate a merge of a rebase of master onto a branch into your central repository. And, and all of these are reasons why, you know, maybe you should think twice about doing it. But if you do need to do it, this is how it's done. And there you go. That's how you rebase master into any branch of your choice. Now, if you enjoyed that tutorial, if you learned something, why don't you head over to the serverside.com. I'm the editor in chief over there. We've got lots of information on Git, GitHub, DevOps tools, but anything that has to do with enterprise software development, we cover on the site as well. And if you're interested in my antics, uh, you can always follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ and subscribe on YouTube.